Hi and welcome back to Urban and Rural Survival. In today's episode, it's very hot. It's about 33 degrees Celsius. And that's what I want to talk about, the sun and how it gives us energy. You see, we've been really fortunate here on the farm in that we've been able to go off the grid completely and install solar power on the top of uh, our house with inverters and batteries. And we've actually managed to completely uh, disconnect from ESCOM, which is our electricity supplier here in Africa, in South Africa. Uh, they're the ones that have all the problem with the load shedding and the hours and hours of blackouts. That doesn't affect us anymore because we have solar power. So I just want to explain to you guys how you go about getting off the grid, how you go about installing solar panels, uh, batteries, inverters, and some of the nuances and things that we didn't know because uh, less than a year ago we would have said this is impossible. We can't get off the grid uh, because of the ignorance that we had and the, the preformed beliefs that we had about how difficult it would be. And although there were some hiccups, it's a lot easier than we thought. So if you want to get off the grid, if you want to install solar power and be completely independent, which is something all preppers should ultimately want, especially here in South Africa where we have such intermittent and um, unpredictable electricity supply, then keep watching. Let me explain to you how it works, all the steps we went through, and how you can do it as well. Thank you. We've been staying on this farm here basically my whole life, so over 30 years. I moved here when I was a year and a half, and I don't really remember anything else. Uh, we've always had ESCOM on the farm. ESCOM is the government electricity service. It's the only people you can really get electricity from in South Africa. Uh, they have a monopoly except for small uh, private things which we'll be discussing. So we always had good service with ESCOM and even when we disconnected uh, up until that time the technicians that would come and uh, fix the transformer or uh, some of the phases that would go down especially during after lightning they were always very efficient they would come like in the night they were really professional guys. The reason we uh, then switched away from ESCOM actually had nothing to do with the service as such uh, although the load shedding that has become a feature in South African life did affect us and obviously it gets worse all the time but we've had generators we've had some <clears throat> backup batteries and uh, transformers those kinds of things inverters um, so we've never had a problem in that sense the only reason we went off ESCOM and completely disconnected off from the grid and went with solar was because of cost. And what I mean by this is that the ESCOM bill was always going up no matter how much or how little electricity you used. So our bill would often be around 5,000 Rand a month and of that 5,000 Rand only about 800 Rand would actually be for the electricity usage. The rest was for line rentals, maintenance on the transformer, all these administrative costs that basically added up to about 4,200 Rand a month, which is a huge amount of money to spend on basically nothing. Um, so this was just going up and up all the time, up to the extent where we were thinking, you know, it may not be affordable to keep the farm. And that's something I would re never really want to consider because this place is my life. But uh, there is a solution. Um, and the solution was solar. So we got a good access to some capital. And we had a number of people come in and do quotes for us, uh, guys from solar companies. Some of the quotes were really high, up to like 400,000 Rand. And then eventually we settled on this company that we have had install our solar equipment and that came to about 150,000 Rand in total. Um, so then let me walk you through how you go about disconnecting from ESCOM and how you go about installing solar or having solar installed so that you can be completely off the grid and completely self-sufficient. We actually got a call from our neighbors the other day. They had asking us if uh, we had power because 
they had no electricity and they hadn't had electricity for 12 hours because of some other error, some other fault line. We said, oh, sorry, man, we don't know. We're on solar. We've always got power. Not in a smug way, but the truth is that is how effective it can be. Although there are some cons to this whole thing, but we'll deal with that in time. The installation took about two days or so. Um, and your solar setup is basically made up of three parts. You've got your panels on the roof your inverter which converts uh, the solar energy from the panels the electrical solar energy into electricity and then you've got your batteries um, which store the power and store the solar power uh, when, for when there isn't any solar power so you can have uh, solar panels and, a, and an inverter without batteries but then when there's no sun there's literally no power so um, batteries is obviously much more advisable for people who are using solar power uh, only or going towards a, a solar power heavy um, a solution that prioritizes solar power above another source. So we had the panels, the batteries and the inverter installed. It took about two days. There was a lot of wiring and that into the DB boards and the various... Um, electrical boards and that on our property. I'm not an expert. Um, so once we had it installed and it was set up and it was working, everything has been going smooth since then. But like I said, our original intention was to go from people who are paying for this three-phase electricity on the plots, which is really expensive with this enormously high maintenance bill and service bill and line charges that just keep going up and up and up that cost considerably more than the actual electricity. We wanted to go from a three phase uh, the reason when you're on the plots that they, they give you three phase is because a lot of people in this area and on the on on the plots which is basically what we call like small farms um, that are grouped together uh, a lot of people have factories, little factories on their farms like middle metal works welding, a couple of our neighbors make trailers um, that people tow behind their cars. So they need quite a bit of substantial three-phase power to power pumps. Our water pump was a three-phase water pump. So one of the things we had to have done at the same time that we installed the solar was we had to replace our borehole pump. And it's a good thing we did because the one that we had uh, was like 1970s technology and it was just about to sort of calcify over when they pulled the pipes out so we would have had to replace it anyway and we put in a submersible pump and that submersible pump is now powered by the solar panels and by the battery and it, um, so that's completely off the grid as well but we couldn't have used our three phase pump with the solar panels because there's a big difference between three phase and one phase power. So we were on three phase. We replaced our pump with a new submersible pump. Uh, the water gets pumped into the water tank overhead above my uh, cottage and everything was going according to plan. So like I said, the plan was then that ESCOM would come and install a new kind of transformer on the box that would put us onto one phase and then when uh, when it was cloudy or there was lots of rain or for whatever reason that we didn't have enough power for, from the solar panels we could still use ESCOM power but we would only use power that we would pay for so we would only use a small amount of power in uh, not ideal solar conditions so and we would only pay for that. So it would only be a couple of hundred rand a month electricity as opposed to 5,000 rand every month of which the majority is not the electricity. So that was the plan. The reason that never happened is that ESCOM never got back to us. For months we just never heard back from them. And in the end, because what we were asking was kind of novel and not something that they asked for every day, no one would take responsibility. No one would send us to the correct department um, or the correct part of ESCOM. No one would actually do what we asked, whereas disconnecting from ESCOM is something they're used to. There is like a, 
uh, paper, there's paperwork for that basically to put it into a shortcut you know so if you want to disconnect from the grid there's a process for that you just start the disconnection process you pay a fee they disconnect you and you're off the grid whereas trying to go from three phase to one phase it was just too complicated for them no, they never got back to us so they lost the customer by their own incompetence we would still be escom customers if they had just used a bit of intelligence and a bit of initiative but instead we completely disconnected from the grid we rely we 100 percent on the solar panels um, so sometimes when it is overcast or if it is raining we don't have enough power the batteries don't get up to full charge and then they do run out we do have generators uh diesel generator as well as like a, a battery inverter that we can use uh, for those times when there is no sun but it's been really hot with el nino lately so we've had a lot of sun and we have always have power in fact it's really helped us a lot in terms of um business opportunities in terms of using ovens to bake things my mom has been baking a lot of biscuits that she wouldn't have been able to do on the old system on escom because it would have cost too much electricity the cost of using the oven for long periods was really expensive on top of all these admin fees that just made electricity with escom unaffordable now it's affordable with solar so i can highly recommend the installation of solar i can highly recommend getting off the grid there are negative times there may be times when we don't have power for long periods but that's the case in south africa anyway with load shedding when you are on escom even when you're on the grid you don't have any power so go ahead guys if you can get access to some capital invest in solar get a good quality solar panels good inverter good batteries and uh, you won't have to worry about load shedding we don't worry we haven't we're not even aware what the load shedding schedule is anymore it doesn't really affect us so if you like this video or if you found it interesting please like and subscribe and i'll see you on the next one